Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to English Language Shelf. In this video, I will tell you about noun and its types. So let's mind our English. You can see on your screen the word noun. So first of all, we should get a general understanding of what is a noun. So noun is basically a word which is used to name a person, place, thing, idea, quality or action. These are some qualities you can say characteristic of a noun that what actually noun tells you about okay so you can see on the screen that there are total 11 types of nouns so i will quickly go through each of them and i will tell you in brief that what do they mean so let's get started number one concrete nouns well these are those nouns which we humans can perceive by our senses. We human beings, we can sense the things, we can sense people, we can sense qualities, we can also see something. So what actually are senses? Human beings have total five senses. We can see, we can smell, we can hear, we can taste, and we can touch. So you can see on your screen some examples, like for sight, we see, we can see painting, we can see a book, we can see a drawing, Mona Lisa painting, we can see that, a picture, Frozen, the film Frozen, we can watch that film, so it's a concrete noun. The word Frozen is the name of a film, so it's a concrete noun, we can sense it. Similarly, when it comes to smell, we can smell roses, we can smell bakery, we can smell skunk. Similarly, for sound, from something which we can listen or hear, we can hear trumpets, we can hear whistles. And for taste and touch, I mean, there are so many examples you can go through. One more, one more point to remember is that all common nouns and proper nouns are also concrete nouns. We can sense common nouns as well as proper nouns. What are these two types of nouns? We will get to know once we reach at those slides. Next up, abstract nouns. So abstract nouns are those which we cannot perceive. By our senses we cannot uh, sense them for example quality quality of many types like kindness beauty honesty bravery we can't sense them we can just you know think or we can feel about it that what really is kindness what really is beauty similarly emotion anger sorrow grief hatred it's a feeling it's an emotion state being something which is totally stable, totally static. Peace, peace is also an environment that is a very peaceful state. Chaos somewhere there is totally trouble. So we can just, you know, think of it. So something which is related to our thoughts and our belief that what we think, what is peace, what we think, what is chaos. Similarly, friendship, wisdom, interest, these are our ideas and thought. Basically, I wanted to write thought, T-H-O-U-G-H-T, so there is a, a small spelling mistake, forgive me for that. But anyways, abstract nouns are those which we cannot perceive by our senses. Then we have proper nouns. Well, these are those nouns which specifically tells about a person, place, or a thing. It specifies. So, for example, Mount Everest. Mount Everest, it is a mountain. Though the word mountain, it is a common noun, but when we name a particular mountain, specifically naming a mountain like Mount Everest, so Mount Everest over here is a proper noun. Similarly, Maya loves to swim early in the morning. So Maya is the name of a woman, girl, or perhaps lady. Similarly, Miami is one of the lovely visiting cities to enjoy. So it's the name of a city, specifically tells the name. And she was born in January this year. Um, January is the name of a year. It's the name of a month. Uh, sorry, not name of a year. It's the name of a month. So January, it specifically tells which month. So proper nouns, which specifically tells the, uh, tells about a person. It tells the name of a person, the name of a place, or the name of a thing. The opposite of proper nouns are common nouns. For example, woman brother, firefighter, island, city, beach, apple, investigation, mountain, government, 
chaos, death, and so many examples. So they actually tell you the general name. They just tell you the general name. They just particularize. They do not specifically tell. Women, women are many with many names. We have so many women, so many women, and uh, there are so many names for females. Similarly, uh, apple, apple, it's a general term, but whether it's red apple or yellow apple or any other specific name of an apple. If you can see over here in the ideas column, ideas column, you see friendship. Friendship, yes, it can also be a common noun. And in the previous slide, we saw that friendship is also an abstract noun. Well, it depends on the context of what you really want to say. Some, I also told in my previous uh, video that somewhere a word can be a noun or it can be a verb or it can also be an adjective. It depends upon the context, what you really want to convey, what message are you really want to, uh, uh, really want to transfer. So let's move on further. Compound nouns. Well, these are those nouns which are formed by combining two or three nouns and as a whole it functions as one single idea. For example, washing machine, two nouns, but the idea is one, it's the name of an object. Thunderstorm, two nouns together, junk food, two nouns, but it acts as one single idea. By the way, you can write a compound noun either as a single word, just like thunderstorm, or you can write as separate words, just like washing machine, junk food, high school, or you can even write with a hyphen. For example, look at number nine and ten. My wife is washing utensils in the wash bin. So there is a hyphen. So you can also write compound nouns with a hyphen, or let's see number ten. My five-year-old is weak in mathematics. So five-year-old, it basically tells that, okay, you have a child who is five-year-old and he or she is weak in mathematics. So this is actually compound noun that you can write with single word or as separate words or with hyphen. Then we have collective nouns. Collective nouns are those which refer to a group of people animal or things so what it actually means is is this like uh, if you just look at the examples a band of men a cast of actors a stack of librarians similarly a colony of girls a brood of hens a flight of birds you can also say a flock of birds a flock of turkeys, that's also right. Similarly, a batch of cakes. You can also say a piece of cake or um, uh, a pack of cake, a bottle of milk. So these are actually a group that, um, like men, there are so many men, but you want to refer to, you know, a particularized. So you say, look at the band of men over there. So that's what collective nouns are about that these are singular nouns that refer to a group of people, animal, or things. Then we have possessive nouns. Possessive nouns are basically about you know ownership. They usually you know end with an apostrophe before one s. For example, you see you can see the table. The table shows you the rules of possessive nouns, that how to make a word a possessive noun. For example, if you have singular nouns, so you have to just add apostrophe with an S. For example, lilies, bars, pictures, daughter-in-laws. But if you have a noun which is plural, but the plural does not end with S, then you have to add apostrophe apostrophe with an s for example children women people and if you have a plural noun which actually ends with an s then you actually only have to add apostrophe for example witnesses churches males johnson johnson's basically i mean it's the name of a company perhaps or the name of a family it depends on the context okay 
the P R possessive noun. Then these two are basically the opposite of each other. Regular nouns and irregular nouns. Well, regular nouns are those that end with, you know, the same spelling. When you make a plural of that noun, so either that noun ends with the suffix s or es and in some cases ies. But irregular nouns, when you make that word into plural, they don't follow that same sequence as regular nouns. For example, duck, ducks, the suffix s makes it plural. Box, boxes, es suffix makes it plural. Candy, candies, ies suffix makes it plural. But in irregular noun, we have man. The plural of man is men. The plural of ox is oxen. The plural of fox is wexen. The plural of goose is geese. The plural of ma mouse is mice. And the plural of woman is women. So these are actually irregular nouns. Then we have verbal nouns. Verbal nouns, they are also called gerunds. So basically, gerunds are those words which end with ing and it functions as a noun. For example, let's see the first sentence. Running is my favorite pastime. So running is a gerund. It is functioning as a noun. <clears throat> Similarly, wishing on a star never got me far. So the word wishing, wishing on a star, this is basically a gerund phrase. So wishing on a star never got me far. I, tr I truly love running. My deepest passion is running. So these are some examples. One more point to discuss over here is that nouns can act as either a subject or direct object or subject complement or object of preposition or a positive. But specifically speaking, in the case of gerunds, gerunds can function, uh, can play the part of subject, they can play the part of direct object and all the uh, parts of sentence. Finally, we have material nouns. I love to call it as the uncountable tangible. What actually it is? Basically, it has to fulfill three conditions. Number one, that material, that noun, should have a direct relation with nature. It should not be man-made. It should be nature-made. Second, it should be tangible. Means you 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 are able to touch it. You can touch it. And number three, that noun should be uncountable. So these three conditions, if a word is meeting these three conditions, then that word is categorized as material nouns. For example, cement. Yes, you extract cement. You can also touch it. And the word itself is uncountable. So it is a material noun. Similarly, water. Like you get water from rain, from sea, from ocean. So it's from nature and you can also touch it. It is tangible and it is uncountable as well. Similarly, rice, wheat, oil, petrol, coal, gold, powder, grass, leather and so many examples you can read on your screen. So once again, functions of nouns. You see, I told you at the at the slide of Jaren that a noun can function in many ways. It can function as a subject. For example, the company is doing great. So over here, the word company, it is a subject. Direct object, I finally bought a new mobile. So direct object, basically, I over here is a subject. Bought is a verb. So mobile, what did you buy? I bought a mobile. So the, the, the answer to the question what is basically a reference to direct object. Max gave Carol another chocolate. So Max is a subject. Max gave Carol. So Carol is an indirect object. So what did Max give Carol? 
it gave it it gave him a chocolate it gave carol a chocolate so that is an indirect object over here object of preposition roses are the flowers of love or it's a preposition and love is the object of preposition so a word which comes after the preposition it is actually object of preposition then adverb adjective possession we saw how possessions are made the office building for example the office building because it tells that which building is it a hospital building is it an office building or is it a school building so over here the word office it's an adjective so anyways these are a few you can say briefing about functions of noun and the types of noun all right so we have finally made it with nouns next up we will discuss pronoun if you guys really like studying with me then please subscribe to my channel click the bell icon give it a like the, if you have any questions or comments you can type something on the comment section and you can share it with your friends and family my channel english language shelf thank you and good day